Maybe this is your first Apple device or you're switching from Android or maybe you've been using iOS for years. Either way, these are the first things I do every time I set up a new iPhone. As soon as you've logged in and set up an Apple ID right away, I'd start thinking about backup. You can plug your iPhone into your computer, do it that way, although it'll take up a whole bunch of space on your hard drive, but the best way to do it really is with iCloud. So if I go into my settings, click on my name here, go to iCloud, iCloud backup, and just make sure that it is turned on. You can see how much storage I use, and this is because I share it with my family, so we're all backing up our phones all the time, and this has saved me. One time I had an iPhone stolen, and it was backed up to the day before it was stolen, so I didn't lose much. And I know you just spend a lot of money on a phone, so you're probably not excited to subscribe to a backup service. I'm just saying it's been worth it for us. If you're bringing your data over from an old iPhone, a lot of people ask what's the best way to do it, and I asked on Twitter, and unfortunately I got a lot of conflicting opinions. There are three ways that I think are best. I'll give you the pros and cons of each. Either you can transfer it directly from another iPhone, so you just put them beside each other and let it sit there for a couple of hours. It transfers the data wirelessly. This brings over the most data, including encrypted passwords and stuff, but it takes a long time and it still didn't catch everything when I did it last time. Or you can back it up from iCloud. So that's how I set up my wife's last phone and it works really well. It brings over a few less passwords because it's not as encrypted, but you can start using your phone in just a few minutes. And then over the next few hours, it downloads all your apps and photos. Or you can go nuclear and just start from scratch, which I've done a few times and is very refreshing. It just takes a little while to get set up again. However you decide to set up your new phone, there's one thing that I found could kind of get in the way. It's actually a great feature, but I usually turn it off. It's called Private Relay. Also, this is another tip. While you're in settings, instead of trying to memorize this huge list of where every setting is, instead, just pull down from the top and start typing what you want to find. In this case, it's Private Relay. And while your phone is downloading a ton of data to set up for the first time, I recommend turning it off. You can just say, turn off Private Relay. You can turn it back on later. It's a great feature and it'll protect you from tracking from various apps and websites, but it can still cause weirdness with certain network activity. Since my phone's already set up, I'm gonna turn Private Relay on. By the way, even if you don't have an iPhone 14, most of this should all be the same, but you do need iOS 16, otherwise things just might look a little different or you'll have some different options. Some of the tools that you interact with most in iOS are in the control center, which you swipe down from the top right. And the more you customize this screen, the more you end up using it. So here's some common ones I use all the time. I'm gonna search for control center. And you can see how I've customized my list of apps here. Some of the most important ones I think are adding screen recording, which you can see I'm using right now to do these tutorials. I also add all the different clock utilities. By the way, you can just rearrange them by doing this. And if you wanna remove one, you say minus. If you wanna add one, you say plus. Flashlight and camera are there by default, and that's especially the main way that I end up using my flashlight, I think. But I'd also recommend adding Shazam for music recognition and quick notes so that you can just quickly create a brand new note about whatever. I love the notes app, it's how I organize all my writing. And while we're in Control Center, a few extra tips. Take a look at the rotation lock, which is how I usually use my phone. I don't like it to rotate most of the time. I do end up having to flick this on and off, but if you're in an app watching videos like YouTube, you can still make it full screen and when you rotate it, it will be the correct orientation. I wish iOS would get a little more intelligent about rotation lock because there's some apps that you would never want to lock and others that you always want to. So I just wish I could be more selective about that. One more thing, there's a bunch of settings that are hidden until you press down and then you can turn them on and off, but you wouldn't notice that on your own necessarily. So just try experimenting around in Control Center. Make sure that you've found all of the options that are available. One of them that's in here actually is True Tone. So you were asked to set this up when you first turned your phone on. Now I recommend turning it off. If we go into our display settings, we can see in a little more detail what it's doing here. It just slightly shifts the screen to match the ambient lighting. And I like that idea, but I find that it often makes it a little bit too yellow. So I prefer to have it off, but more so when I see other people's phones, I just think it's crazy how strong they will let their night mode be, which basically creates a yellow shift and it just, it looks horrible. This whole blue light thing of keeping you awake at night isn't quite accurate. I'd say if you wanna not stay up at night, just put your phone away, turn off your phone. Or another thing you can do, I like to use the automatic dark and light mode so that it switches between dark mode and light mode depending on the time of day and just kind of matches my area a little better without distorting the colors. And speaking of taking a break from your phone, I recommend turning off as many notifications as possible. 
Each time you install an app, it usually asks you if you want to enable notifications. I say no most of the time, unless I know exactly what I want to see those notifications for. And in notification settings, you can see what's on and you can also see that most of these are off. But actually, here's a good example, Canva. This is an app that I really like, I use it all the time, but I don't need it to notify me about anything. I will launch the app and I want to use it, so I'm going to just turn it off. Now, the sponsor of today's video wanted me to remind you one very important thing to do when you get a new phone, and that is to put it in a case. This is Casefy's new bounce case, which is the most protective they've ever made. It's got these super protective absorbent corners, kind of like sneakers that just take so much the impact when your phone falls. And the protection goes all the way through the back of the case. Also notice that it's got MagSafe on it, which I order on all of my cases to make sure I can use it with any accessories. And if you head over to casedefy.com slash Tyler Stallman right now, you're gonna see that they're having their Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. This is the biggest sale of the year on the world's most popular tech accessory brand. So if you thought about picking one up in the last video, now's the time, especially if you wanna grab one as a holiday gift. There are tons of designs, over 2,000 of them. You can also get them customized for yourself or that special someone. They don't just look good, they're also made from 65% recycled material, and they have some serious protection, up to 21.3 feet with the new bounce case. So take advantage of the sale by picking up a screen protector, which is the first line of defense against scratches, and also the lens protector, which makes sure that every single part of your phone is completely covered. And brand new for me, I didn't get to test this in the last video, is their utility strap. There's this clever hook that just mounts into the bottom of whichever case you have. And check out how crazy this clasp is. It slides up to undo, but to attach it, you just press down. I need a belt like this. It's good design. So now is the time. If you've been waiting to pick one up, head to casetify.com slash Tyler Stallman and get the best deal you possibly can. Thanks again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. It's also good to audit your app sometimes and go into the privacy and security settings and just make sure the permissions you're giving make sense for what the app does. So here's an example. TikTok, I never want to have my location. I just don't want to share it with them for any reason, so I turn it off. I also changed a lot of default settings in the camera app, which I'm not gonna go into detail about that here because I made another video that goes way more into detail about all those camera settings and what's on my iPhone in general. So there you can see all the apps that I use, how I set up my lock screen and so much else. So after you finish this video about setting up your iPhone, that's the next step of taking it further. And this seems like a good time to mention that if you like videos like this one, subscribe and there will be more to come. I'd really appreciate it. Another setting that I change on day one is I go into sound and haptics. I turn off this ringtone change with button setting because usually I'm just gonna use the switch to either mute my ringtone or leave it on and I don't really need the volume to go up or down. Then I go into keyboard feedback and I turn off sound because nobody needs to hear me typing and I turn on haptic so I can feel that same response. I really like this update, it's in newer iPhones and basically as you type there's this tiny little vibration that feels like you touched a key. Some of the first apps you'll want to install are a password manager and authenticator if you're already using them. They are built into iOS, so you don't need to get external ones, but I still prefer the extra features of 1Password and Google Authenticator. And this is something that everybody in the Twitter thread brought attention to, like Sydney mentioned, don't delete Google Authenticator until you transfer to your new phone. That's very true because there's a bunch of apps that may need to verify with your real world device. So if you're transferring from an old iPhone, it's really easy to move your authenticator app from one to another. You just need to scan a QR code, but make sure all of that's done before you delete the old phone. And here's another good one from Ryan. As a former Apple employee who did setups all the time, it's a simple one. Remember your iCloud password. The amount of time I spent resetting passwords are days I'll never get back. That's absolutely true. I mean, a lot of people just end up locking themselves out instead of getting hacked. So keep that password somewhere secure. This one's smart too, and I wouldn't have thought of it myself. If they're coming from Android, it's that you long press the spacebar to move between text. This is a feature we lost with force touch that you'd press down harder and you'd start moving the cursor. Now you have a long press to do that, or you press and hold on the spacebar and then you can start moving the cursor. This basically becomes a trackpad at the bottom of your screen. It's a little bit hidden, hard to discover. I think a lot of people never realize it's possible. How about some more for photography? So I go into the Photos app, and for one thing, I turn on optimized iPhone storage, which basically uploads all my photos to iCloud so they are backed up somewhere, and then only keeps a small preview on my phone. I actually don't really like working this way because sometimes if you're traveling and don't have internet, then you can't access all your photos. I don't like that experience, but I just, I kind of take too many photos to keep them on each phone. So if you don't shoot a lot, if you have enough storage to keep them all locally, 
You can do that, just use iCloud as a backup, but for me, it's the only way that I don't fill my iPhones. Now, the thing that I turn off, this is kind of a preference, but I turn off view full HDR. I don't capture photos in HDR, I don't shoot video in HDR, and it just looks distracting to me. The highlights look clipped. There's one setting I just discovered the other day in the Photos app, and I don't know how I never clicked on this link before, but inside there's options, and if I click on that, I have, well, send as isn't that interesting, but include all photos data. What it does is when you're transferring something with AirDrop, it sends it in the highest possible quality, doesn't delete any of the metadata, doesn't compress it, and that's what I want anytime that I'm sharing, especially with myself, and I'm gonna edit the photo later. By the way, anybody new to iPhone, AirDrop is like one of the main things that keeps iPhone users coming back. It's incredibly useful. I use it multiple times every single day. And so it, it actually drives me crazy that it doesn't work like 10, 20% of the time because I need it to work 100% of the time. So that's my request for the next iOS update. But yeah, AirDrop, it's very powerful. A great power user tool is text replacement. There's other apps that do this, but it is built into the iPhone. So if you just search settings for text replacement, first of all, there's a bunch of settings you might wanna think about if you use like auto capitalization and the period shortcut where you press spacebar twice. I like having all of this assisted typing. My wife doesn't though, so it depends how you type. If you're a better typer, you might wanna turn some of this off, but I'm not great, so I, I need all the help I can get. The cool thing here is text replacement. So it's basically you type in a shortcut and it replaces it. So an example would be, I'd put in my address as 123 Main Street, and the shortcut might be home address. And every time I start to type home address, it's gonna recommend 123 Main Street and replace that. So I don't have to make sure that I get all the characters in my address correct. I'd also be sure to look at some of the settings in the health app. There's a bunch of stuff that's useful in here like medical ID. So if you're, let's say injured and somebody looks at your phone, they can tell details about your medical history or anything they might need to know. And if you have an iPhone 14, head over to emergency SOS and make sure that call after severe crash is on. This is the crash detection that we saw in Apple's announcement. And basically if you're in a serious incident, it's gonna ask if you wanna call emergency services, potentially send your location, but just help out if you happen to be incapacitated. Okay, and I also wanna include this controversial one. So if you search for accessibility, there's a ton of useful stuff in here. It's actually a lot of really cool hidden secret stuff will be located in this menu. So dig around for yourself. But the one I'll draw attention to is inside of touch. You can go to the bottom, go to back tap. And the reason I'm talking about this is every time somebody makes a TikTok or an Instagram reel about this tip, it goes viral, but it doesn't always work. So I'm going to go to double tap. And let's say we want to launch the camera with a double tap on the back. Now, all I have to do is double tap the back of the phone and it launches the camera. This is really cool. Like, I like this idea. People present it as like, get a free extra button on your iPhone. The problem is <laughs> it goes off all the time in your pocket. And I could go on and on because it takes three or four days for me to properly set up my iPhone. But I have gone on and made a whole playlist of tips and tricks about how to set up your iPhone, including the one I mentioned earlier where I go through all the apps that I use, some of the camera settings. So that's where I'll see you guys next. Thanks for watching.